Okay, part C, lecture five, currency debasement in the late Roman Empire. What happened? What happened to Rome? Well, if you want to talk about the decline of Rome, that's a whole, you know, huge topic. You, you could have a whole course on the fall of the Roman Empire. For part C today, we're going to take a, just a very brief survey of the fall of the currency, which I believe reflects certain problems that already existed in the Roman Empire and also help to accelerate that decline. And so in some senses was responsible for the decline. In other senses, other things were responsible, but in either case, it reflected the decline. Look at that. There's a uh, good uh, illustration of the, the fall of the Rome, Roman currency from predominantly silver and then debased all the way to a to a cheap pathetic looking copper coin well the original weight of the denarius as established in 211 bc was four and a half grams or about one fifth of an ounce of silver it was about 95 percent fine well during the second punic wars just uh, the, the pressure that arose from well, a time of war, the Roman Senate decreased the weight of the denarius, kept the same, the same value, the same extrinsic value, but decreased the weight a bit to 3.9 grams. That wasn't a huge shift. And, and actually this weight of 3.9 grams continued for the next 200 and actually over 250 years. Then in AD 64, Nero, the emperor Nero, debased, or excuse me, uh, uh, reduced the weight a bit more to 3.4 grams. Now the denarius remained at 3.4 grams from this point onward. You say, whoa, that was the debasement? Well, uh, hang on a second, hang on a second, because uh, what we're about to see, the three, 3.4 grams will remain a weight. It's no longer going to be 93, 95% silver. The content, the metallic composition of the coin will be debased, despite the weight remaining the same. What causes this debasement? The debasement will take place largely in the third century. Well, historians of late Rome call this period the, the crisis of the third century, the crisis of the third century, just absolute debacle for the Roman Empire, especially in the, the middle part of the third century. The empire almost completely collapsed. Uh, barbarian invasions from, from everywhere, uh, but especially from the north, civil wars, just no uh, firm or steady leadership within the Roman Empire, just one emperor after after the next. Peasant rebellions, plague, currency debasement, economic depression. Rome suffered a, uh, a major trade deficit with India, especially. They were just importing way more goods from India than they were than they were exporting. And that deficit was made up with silver exports to India. And so all, you know, silver was leaving the Roman Empire across the Red Sea into India during this period. Also, uh, some of the old mines that the Romans had depended on, especially in the Iberian Peninsula, had become exhausted. And so the, the Romans just don't have uh, the mining resources that they once enjoyed. All sorts of different things are, are, are at play, but it was a time of extreme um, extreme crisis, and this was the context of the debasement. So here is a chart of the fineness or the the composition of the Roman silver coins, and you'll see for a long time it was upwards of ninety percent, and then beginning in the second century, we see a slow decline where it's still mostly silver, but it's not ninety percent silver anymore and then just a total drop off. This ends at 250 if, if it were to be if it were to extend beyond 
250 eventually it just completely it falls to two percent silver and almost entirely copper look at that the silver content in a denarius so nero had reduced weight to 3.4 grams but 93.5 percent fine that's actually more fine than the uh than the than uh sterling silver sterling silver is 92 and a half percent fine that's a solid silver coin still um, but in ad 150 it's brought down to 83.5 percent fine and you had some more gradual debasements by 241 it's 48 percent fine and and the remainder was copper primarily copper 260 it's only 20 percent fine so this is at the height of the crisis and then and then by 274 five percent fine and then by um uh within a few years of that it was down to as low as two percent two percent fine and you can see a, a visual of that and this all it's caused inflation uh because the the extrinsic value or the value that the government said it had remained the same but it was clear the intrinsic value wasn't there anymore and so prices went through the roof in fact there was an emperor diocletian who attempted to uh, uh set a price controls and a maximum on what you could charge and in it and it failed there was a emerge a black underground market to to skirt around those price controls so the denarius goes into stark decline. And then there was another element that I want to discuss of this debasement. And that was the introduction of a, of a new coin in the early third century at about 210 AD. This particular version of the coin is from 240. Historians call it the Antoninianus, the Antoninianus. And the Antoninianus was an entirely new coin. It was a little larger than a denarius. And at first it was silver. It's a silver coin, predominantly. Had a little bit of copper in it, but predominantly silver. It had the silver content, one of these coins, it was large. It had the silver content of about one and a half denarii. So if you take a denarius and then maybe uh, cut another denarius in half, that's about how large Antoninianus was and how much silver contained. However, the government said, the official ratio is two to one. Government said two, or an Antoninianus is worth two denarii, not 1.5 denarii. Now, what does this all mean? How, why does this matter? Well, consider this. An Antoninianus weighed 5.1 grams, approximately. 5.1 grams. Mostly silver, some copper in the beginning. Two denarii weighed 6.8 grams. 6.8 grams for two denarii, 5.1 grams for one Antoninianus. Government says two denarii equal one Antoninianus. Now, if you are buying something with money, are you going to want to spend a coin that weighs 5.1 grams of silver or are you going to want to spend two coins that together amount to 6.8 grams of silver well if you're at all intelligent you uh if you're not an idiot excuse my my french you're going to use the antoninianus right you're not going to use the coin that has more silver in it when the government says they have the same value so before long, because the Antoninianus was overvalued, overvalued, meaning that it has a lower intrinsic value than, than the price the government had given it, had placed upon it, because the Antoninianus was overvalued, people chose to spend the Antoninianus and then refused to spend the denarius. They hoarded the, denar the denarius and exclusively use the Antoninianus. And the Antoninianus is overvalued because the government says this equals that. Well, everybody knew it didn't. Everybody knew that this is worth more, right? Even though the government said they were equal, this is clearly worth more. So people chose to spend this coin and to hoard 
this coin. And the whole reason why I'm bringing this up is because this is illustrates a principle that we're going to return to in this class on a number of occasions, a principle that we call Gresham's Law. Gresham's Law. This is a law, general economic principle, that bad money chases out good money. Bad money chases out good money. Let me give you a modern day example. The U.S. dime before 1965 had 90% silver and 10% copper. Well, there's an old U.S. dime, 90% silver and 10% copper. Well, in 1965, Congress passed the Coinage Act, and the Coinage Act removed the silver from the dime, and the dime after 1965 to the present day consists of 75% copper and 25% nickel. Now, the government didn't say, hey, you need to eject all of these old pre-1965 coins from circulation. What happened? Well, let's see. If you have two dimes and one dime is 90% silver and the other dime has no silver at all in it, which dime are you going to spend? You're going to spend the, the dime that has no silver in it. All right. To this day, actually, I have a friend who, uh, who used to work in... Uh, with vending machines and he said every now and then he would see uh, somebody use the silver dime it's like what was this person thinking well they didn't know what they were doing they just well I have a dime I'll spend it but it's very very hard difficult uh, if not close to impossible to find a silver dime in circulation nowadays just because what's happened to them they've all been ejected from circulation now you can find silver dimes very easily but you're going to have to pay several dollars for them you can go to a coin shop and buy I have quite a few, of, but I didn't pay 10 cents for them. I had to pay several dollars for them, depending on what the price of silver is. Silver has actually gone up a bit in price, so that's uh, the price of those old silver dimes has gone up as well. But you're not going to see them in circulation. That's a good example of the good money was the dime, uh, the, the silver dime. The, quote, bad money is the dime without silver. And so the bad money drove out the good money. Does that make sense? Same thing happened... Uh, in, in Rome with the Antoninianus versus the Denarius. I'll give you another example from present day. In 1982, the penny, the composition of the penny was changed. There was a penny shortage. Before 1982, the penny was 95% copper and 5% zinc. After 1982, the penny was changed to 98% zinc and 2% copper. So the penny today has almost zero copper in it. It's mostly zinc. What happened to the old pennies? Well, copper isn't silver, so it's actually it's more possible to find old pre-1982 pennies. I'll find them on occasion. Um, they're worth several cents. I think like three or four cents. I'd have to double check that. All right. So they're worth more than one cent. So, but that's not a huge incentive to you know hoard the pennies and so you still see a few of them out there but there are actually people who collect the old 1982 pennies um, and get enough of them you can melt down the copper and it's I, I believe that it might be illegal I'm not sure uh, so I don't want to uh, uh, endorse any criminal behavior here but if you melt down the copper you can make a, a little bit of a profit of course is it worth it to, to go about collecting I'm not sure for a while actually I, I was uh, every time I came across an old 19 pre 1982 penny I ejected it from circulation and I have a little peg at home uh, not even because I plan to do anything with it, but almost just the principle of it, right? Gresham's law needs to be put into effect. And so I'm ejecting this penny from circulation. This penny has no business uh, uh, actively circulating. Anyway, um, I don't really do that much anymore. Something about having triplets uh, and being a father um, tends to distract you from, you know, things like collecting pre-1982 pennies. Um, and there are other examples in, in history. We'll see some more, but in ancient history, when the uh, the Athenians were defeated by Sparta, the Athenian government was just broke, bankrupt. The Spartans had taken over the silver mines that Athens had once controlled. And so the Athenian government in 405 BC issued bronze coins and it had a very, 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 very thin wash of silver over the bronze. And they said, this has the same value as the old silver coins. Well, what happened? Everyone hoarded the old silver coins and, and exclusively used 
the new bronze coins that had just a tiny bit of silver in it. There was a, a, a Greek playwright from that era, Aristophanes, who, who wrote, quote, the ancient coins, the old silver Athenian coins are excellent, yet we make no use of them and prefer those bad copper pieces quite recently issued and so wretchedly struck. He was almost somewhat confused by this. Well, we have this beautiful silver coinage and we're not using it. Why aren't we using it? Well, it's because it's, it's good money. And when you introduce bad money into the occasion, bad money chases out good money. Gresham's Law. What, who is this Gresham? Who is this Gresham? Well, um, in 15, you may, may remember from a previous lecture, we talked about the Great Debasement in the middle of the 16th century when Henry VIII and his son Edward debased the English currency so that it was mostly copper with just a little bit of silver. Well, Elizabeth decided to reform the currency, return the pound to four ounces of silver. She was advised by a financier, a wealthy merchant of the day named Thomas Gresham to call all the old bad money out of circulation and recoin everything. Just get rid of that bad money because Thomas Gresham said, essentially, you know, if you have that bad money, it's going to make the whole project useless because as soon as you issue the good money, the good money is going to be hoarded as long as the bad money is there. Thomas Gresham, there he is. Uh, actually, Thomas Gresham did not himself write Gresham's Law. People have known about what, what we call Gresham's Law for centuries before Thomas Gresham. And, uh, and actually, the name Gresham's Law was given to it retrospectively by some historian in the 19th century. But anyway, that's Gresham, uh, and, uh, one of the more famous economic laws in monetary theory. So, um, but even the Antoninianus, like the Denarius, was debased by bronze. By the end of the third century, the Antoninianus had only 2% silver. This is an Antoninianus from 280 AD. You can tell this is not a silver coin very clearly. So the currency completely debased. Rome hangs on. Oh yeah, here's another chart. Look at that. The debasement, this is of the Antoninianus. 240s, it was about 40% fine, down to 30% fine, 20% fine, and less than 5% fine. Rome hangs on for a little while longer. Diocletian somewhat recovers things a bit, although yeah, not anywhere close to the old glory of the Roman Empire, of the earlier Roman Empire. Diocletian actually partitions the empire in half between west and east. fifth century barbarian invasions from the north from all over Rome is sacked in 410 by the Visigoths and then in 455 the Vandals sack Rome again and so the western empire just completely disintegrates the eastern empire sort of does its own thing and survives for a long time the Byzantine Empire became known as it became known. But for the western half of the Roman Empire in 476 AD, the uh, final Roman emperor was deposed and done. And Rome, or Western Europe, uh, descended into what historians have called the Dark Ages. So that concludes our section on Rome. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next time as we as we embark on the medieval period.